let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about the greenhouse videos that I make and where we're going to go with them in 2022. So a lot of what this channel has talked about with greenhouses is heating. And there's a lot of different ways that you can heat your greenhouse. There's solar thermal, there's solar photovoltaic, there's electric, there's compost heating piles, there's thermal mass passive heating, there's propane and natural gas, there's geothermal and geobattery type systems, as well as there's burning wood. And I mean, there is a few others, but those are the primary ones people have been using. And myself, this last year and up till now, I've been burning wood. I got a wood boiler and I'm using that to heat my greenhouse. So what I'm gonna talk about in this video is my experiences so far. And we've gotten down to colder than minus 40 with the wind chill. So some of my experiences with my dome greenhouse are pretty relevant. Simple tech. That's the name of this channel. And we have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing. You can check out after you watch this one. There's some really cool ideas in there. It's actually starting to become quite the library of greenhouse stuff on this channel now. So if you got the time, sniff through it. If you like something, hit like. So I'm going to take you on a tour of my greenhouse. It's January. It's minus 20 to minus 30 outside. And that's before the wind chill. And what I'm going to show you and what you're seeing here is how things are working. My peppers did not work well. Um, but the tomatoes and especially those tomatoes that were under the heater worked really well. Right now, it's about mine, or it's about 15 degrees positive in the greenhouse. It's a double air inflation type system. And as you can see, I was pushing on it there. One of the things I found over time was that with a dome, I got holes in the air inflation system and I wasn't impressed. Yeah, I need to clean out some of my tomatoes. And I have a light down there and I have another light that I'm going to be hooking up right away to help grow more in the winter as well i'm going to be adding co2 to get my tomatoes bigger yes they're growing yes i get quite a few of them and they're tasty i mean they're better still than anything you can find in a store and you can see the wicking pots and how i actually do add water to them and add the fertilizer to them but this is just a quick tour as i'm sniffing around the greenhouse and showing you some of the different things there's my heater uh, it's actually just a car radiator and it blows heat through a fan or the fan blows through the radiator. The efficiency of a fan on a radiator when you're pumping that heat from your wood boiler is fantastic. That This simple little unit that I hang from the ceiling pumps out an enormous, and I mean enormous amount of heat. I actually have it set up that I could put up another one. I haven't done that yet, but I also heat the greenhouse via a radiant floor. And you can see some of the pipes on the ground there. And uh, they go underneath the concrete blocks. I did another video that describes how I did this. There's the pump. Uh, you can see some more tomatoes that are growing. I do definitely need to trim out the garbage on my tomatoes. I haven't been in the greenhouse as much as I needed to be. But the wood boiler works incredibly well. And putting heat into this greenhouse in minus 30, minus 40 degree situations. That being said, if you're going to build a greenhouse, don't do a dome. I would honestly recommend doing a Quonset hut. And the main reason for that is that it's much easier to set up an insulated blanket so that you can get a lot more insulation and you can use much less heat to heat your greenhouse. That's going to be my next greenhouse is an insulated blanket. As you notice, I'm growing everything in pots. Um, I don't dig into the ground because the ground will go four or five feet frozen in the environment that I live in in Manitoba. You can see here the ProMix is a type of fertilizer that I, a liquid fertilizer that I put into my tomatoes and my peppers. Unfortunately, the peppers, as you saw, didn't handle the colder weather. The tomatoes have done well, though. We never actually went below zero with this greenhouse, but we got awful close. I think we went down to one degree. The other problem I've got right now, well, there's um, my hot peppers actually survived really well, but most of my other peppers didn't do well. 
insulation is my biggest problem. The wood base that's around my greenhouse is just plywood facing the outside. So that being said, I need to add insulation to this and I could probably get a better insulated value if I actually insulated the base of this greenhouse because I mean, yes, heat rises, but a lot of the heat is down low, especially with the radiant floor and it would hold a lot more of it in place, I believe. So if you follow this channel, I think I'm going to actually add insulation to the base of this greenhouse and it'll be an upcoming video that you can watch so that I can grow more tomatoes. As I mentioned that I have a light, the other thing I'm going to add very soon is CO2. And I've just got some old winemaking kits where I'm going to pour some sugar into some water, maybe add a couple raisins and see how much CO2 I can add around some of my tomato plants where they're growing to see if I can get them bigger because the tomatoes I have right now are three quarters the size of my fist, which is nice and they're edible, but I want them bigger than my fist. I want them double this size or larger. And the only way I really know how to do that is if I get a little more light, but we've had that kind of light in the summer because in Manitoba we get, you know, at peak season, we're looking at 15 to 18 hours of daylight and I wasn't getting bigger tomatoes. So the only other thing I can think of because I did have the temperatures in the right range at that time. I mean, right now I'm going a little colder than I should be, is CO2. So I'm hoping that if I add CO2, because I have been adding a substantial amount of liquid fertilizer, I can get some big tomatoes. And you can see, once again, there's my air blower. And uh, it's just hooked up with duct tape. I've got some trees that I want to put on the property later. Um, the main reason I like this dome right now is because I have an RV park and I keep a 15 watt light on this dome and it looks like a flying saucer at night. It just looks really cool. You can see um, pretty easily that that light, and it's just a little trouble light that I have hooked up on a timer switch, will nicely light up the whole dome. And I'll see if I can find an old picture of it somewhere lighting it up at night, but it looks fantastic from miles away. And people look at it and wonder, what is this? Another one of the big problems I had with my dome was leakage. Like it tore on some of the pressure points. And you can see from this picture um, that I tried taping it. And I taped it on the inside and outside from both sides. It didn't stick all that well. I'm going to need to either replace the plastic material or sew it. My boiler, though, has been a wonderful wonderful thing you can see the air going in there but the boiler although it uses a lot of wood produces an enormous amount of heat and it's wonderful that it heats with hot water because it's relatively safe you're not looking at a fire inside the greenhouse um the bad part is you've got to put a lot of wood in i'm looking at more than 20 cords this year and i'm not going to have enough i'm going to need 30 cords of wood but my big problem is i used a lot of poplar and poplar doesn't have the same kind of energy as oak or elm or ash so i, I could probably cut it in half if i went to better wood but i got the wood free and i like free <laughs> so that's why you're seeing what you see there so as some of you may or may not know, I own, developed and built an RV park on the lake. Um, right now we're specializing in park model trailers. Um, clients can come down year round. They tend to come on the weekends and not a weekday like today when I shot this. There's my greenhouse as you come into the RV park um, and you can see all the units. And there goes my dogs going for a wonderful run because there's nobody down today and they're having the time of their lives uh, <laughs> running down this. That being said, some of the other videos you will see as we go forward will include uh, some stuff with my tractor, some stuff with excavators, maybe putting in holding tanks and watering systems, gravel, um, leveling land. And I do hope to be buying an excavator, a 20 ton excavator within the next year or two to further help develop my land and install this kind of stuff and go forward because renting it just doesn't make sense. So some of the things around Simple Tech are the simple stuff that I do on my main business, which takes up a lot of my time, um, and how we go forward on it. 
that's what I plan to do for the year is we're going to talk about greenhouses, we're going to talk about growing, and maybe a couple of videos here and there of what I'm doing on the resort. I hope you have a great year because I'm planning one.